Hi everyone and welcome back to Bonnie Astrology. Today we're discussing the full moon in Virgo which is happening on the 24th of February 2024 and of course what it means for your zodiac sign. So if you do enjoy this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to the channel for regular astrology updates from me. All of my socials are listed in the description box as well as where you can find me to book an astrological service. Please note I'm a bit behind on responses at the moment but I am taking bookings for March. So let's have a little look at this full moon in Virgo. So full moons coincide with peak emotional experiences. And in the sign of Virgo, these peak emotions can surround health, wellness, our day-to-day -day routines, our productivity, how organized we are. It can also lead us to be more self-critical or critical of others. But this full moon tends to bring themes of health and well-being into the forefront of our lives, regardless of the area that it is falling in our chart. It tends to bring a peak emotional experience whereby we may be a little bit more conscious of our habits, of our health, and subsequently, as it is a full moon, what we need to release or let go of in these areas. So for some people, this can look like a change in diet. For some people, this can look like a change in routine. And one of the key things happening around the time of this full moon is that the North Node and Chiron are going to be conjunct. And the North Node shows us the direction that we're supposed to be going in, where we're supposed to be putting our time and energy for our best growth, basically. And it is conjunct Aries, uh, Chiron and Aries. So Chiron is the wounded healer. Virgo is the sign of health and well-being. And Aries is an energy which is very brave, courageous and direct. It tends to take initiative. It tends to initiate. And I think a lot of people around this full moon are going to be stepping it up when it comes to their health and well-being, getting very serious about their health and well-being, as Saturn is in the mix here as well, but we will get to that in a second. So how this can play out for many people is going to be taking up with a personal trainer seeing a physician, seeing a healthcare practitioner, a medical practitioner, a Reiki healer, a physio, a dentist maybe, deciding that you're not going to ignore your symptoms or where you feel there is place for improvement anymore and perhaps seeking the help of a professional, the assistance of a professional in the wealth, the health and wellness field. And so this may be that perhaps you're seeing a dietitian too. You might be seeing someone who is more holistic. It can really play out in different ways, whether this is that you're seeing a traditional doctor or whether or not it is that you're seeking the services of a Reiki healer. It looks as though this full moon is the perfect time to focus on health and healing. And with the North Node Chiron conjunct in Aries, this is where you're taking the initi initiative. And because this is in Aries, this North Node Chiron conjunction, it looks very focused on physical health or head health. So your brain, your nose, your teeth, um, Aries rules the head. So anything that you could be experiencing, even the eyes, any symptoms you could be experiencing on a head level, say you're suffering from chronic headaches or migraines, which may actually be more prominent at this time, thanks to that conjunction and the full moon. But you're more likely to not want to ignore these symptoms and take some kind of initiative. For some people, this could be wanting to get more physically fit as Aries is a sign associated with the gym and any kind of sport, perhaps even competitive sport. There may be something coming up around health and competitive sports at this time. Maybe some questions or information may come up surrounding how... For example, contact sports affects the brain of the people that play it. These can be things that come up at this time on a more general level, but for a lot of people, it does look like seeking health and well-being services of others. Now, because the dispositor of this full moon is Mercury in Pisces, for a lot of people, this is looking to be something maybe a little bit more spiritual maybe seeing a psychic, maybe seeing a medium, maybe seeing a Reiki healer, maybe seeing a shamanic um, practitioner, seeing something that is perhaps more based on spiritual health and well-being because Mercury in Pisces tends to communicate more through the spiritual and more through the mystical but it can also bring an emphasis on psychological perspectives too so this might be a time you're seeking a therapist or you feel called to so if you feel any of those calls do pay attention to them this is not a time to ignore your symptoms this is not a time to ignore your intuitive voice 
Mercury in Pisces is very intuitive and it tends to base its intuition, base its uh, approaches more on intuition than on facts, even though the full moon in Virgo is a very factual full moon. You may be trying to seek a blend of both. So you might be having, having an intuitive thought and you might want it to be confirmed by someone else who is maybe more experienced in that field. So as I say, do listen to your body and also listen to your intuition around the time of this full moon. They're likely working in tandem. Now, the opposition to Mercury and Pisces, which does rule this full moon, it can be tricky as the Sun, Mercury and Saturn are all going to meet on the 28th of February. So this full moon is happening in the run up to that. And this can mean that perhaps you're feeling called to get very serious about something in your life where you need to set a boundary. And with this happening in the sign of Pisces, this looks quite energetic. This looks quite emotional. Setting an energetic or emotional boundary and this boundary can be with yourself or it can be with others. But the difficulty with any sign, um, any planet, apologies being in Pisces, is that sometimes we can be quite unsure of what is our own and what is someone else's or the collective's. I know this sounds very woo, but it can be where your emotions are not necessarily your own, your thoughts are not your own. You can be picking up somebody else's or you can even be channeling if you're mystical and psychic, but this can be where it's quite difficult to find a balance between logic and emotion and you're trying to differentiate, and it's quite tricky to do so, but differentiate between what thoughts are yours and what thoughts are what you've picked up from somebody else. Similar with feelings, if you've ever sat in a room where the energy is quite difficult, there is bad news, there is something to be concerned about. For a lot of people in it, you will find that you leave the room with a lingering heavy energy on you that is not necessarily yours if you're not involved but you do tend to pick it up as human beings are empathic creatures for the most part. We see that as Mercury, um, um, as Pisces energy rules sleep, if you yawn, it tends to be that people around you yawn because it's infectious, it's empathic, it's empathetic. It is where you're sympathizing with someone who is tired. So Mercury being in Pisces can be where you're picking up other people's emotions and thoughts and you need to figure out a way to set or clear a boundary between you and the thoughts and emotions of other people. It can be quite tricky to have important discussions and negotiations, though it will be uh, a key theme on the 28th. It, there can be difficult or serious conversations coming up or conversations where you need to draw a boundary, you need to set some kind of parameters in your emotional life. And it can be tricky to be factual. It can be tricky to be purely intellectual with Mercury, Saturn and the Sun meeting in Pisces, you may need to get a bit more serious where you have been escaping something or living in your daydreams without taking any tangible action. The opposition of this full moon to Saturn can feel a little gloomy and it can feel a little bit somber in places and perhaps for the most part it feels sobering. A lot of people under this full moon, and it has been a theme since Saturn entered Pisces in March 2023, but a lot of people are drinking less. A lot of people are less inclined to want alcohol or they're less inclined to want to use substances to escape their reality. It's a very sobering transit is Saturn in Pisces, so people may be moving away from these types of things. And so perhaps because this full moon is happening in the sign of Virgo associated with health, some are going to find that it is necessary for their health to stop drinking, to stop using a particular substance, to stop eating something. With it being Saturn, this might also be for the sake of your teeth. So a lot of people may be giving up sugar under this transit as well. But with Saturn being in Pisces, again, it emphasizes that sense of needing to set clear boundaries with yourself energetically. And I think for the most part, it lies less in asserting them to another person, but more so in guarding your own thoughts, guarding your own well-being and guarding your own health and your own mental health and emotions, setting up some kind of boundary there where perhaps you find yourself scrolling. I know that that is a, a large problem at the moment is you find yourself scrolling and you're picking up all these different energies, these thoughts, opinions, and then you can feel quite overwhelmed and maybe not even be 100% sure of why. But this can look like having to assert some sort of boundaries. This can also, when it comes to your 
Because this full moon's happening in the sign of Virgo, you may have to set up boundaries, boundaries when it comes to co-workers, employees, or even healthcare practitioners. Perhaps you feel like you have a very clear and uh, intuitive knowing something's wrong with you, but you're coming up against someone that's saying, no, you're fine, and you know you're not fine. And thus, with this being an immutable sign, it's best to seek a second opinion if you feel that something is wrong on a healthcare level. The really positive thing about this full moon, and I have left... <laughs> left it to last because I wanted to deal with the more somber and serious aspects but this full moon is going to be trining Jupiter in Taurus and this brings a beautiful expansive and blessed energy and twist to this full moon as well the trine to Jupiter in Taurus can be a sense of optimism so of course we have this sobering somber Saturnian opposition but we do have this beautiful trine to Jupiter whereby you may notice something under this full moon manifests for you quite positively it may be that you can get some good news some gratitude you might have something you feel very grateful for, or you may feel as though something that has been somewhat of a tough lesson for a while is actually starting to show growth and positive change. And maybe things are starting to turn around. Now, the full moon is at five degrees of Virgo, which in the Sabian symbols, if we look at five to six degrees of Virgo, is the merry-go-round. And merry-go-rounds can be quite Fun. So this can be an important time with the trine to Jupiter to lighten up and have fun where you can, to bring in a little bit more joy. Oftentimes with Jupiter in Taurus, it does tend to be joy that surrounds music, it surrounds uh, food, it surrounds good drink, good wine. Obviously with the Saturn and Pisces opposition, some people are giving up those things. But you may notice that you want to take joy in cooking foods that are both nutritious and also good for you while enjoyable for you as well that can be a very earth sign orientation this may also be where you have some sort of positive investment paying off when it comes to your health and your routines something that you've been working quite hard on but it gives a sense of positivity and optimism as well as the sombering serious boundary setting as the two can coexist at the same time so there is a positive blessing coming in with Jupiter. And as I say, this is the merry-go-round in the Sabian symbols. And that can be a really good indication of where you need to break a cycle or a pattern. What is going round and round that you're ready to stop? You're ready to change. With it being a merry-go-round, this can also mean that perhaps an opportunity or person or theme comes around again for you to address with this full moon in Virgo, depending on what Virgo is in your chart what house Virgo is in your chart and do watch as well from a health perspective with this merry-go-round Sabian symbol degree of being a bit dizzy too so if you suffer from vertigo be mindful of that around the full moon it could be playing up too so another thing I want to mention before we get into the horoscopes because I've been going about this quite a long time is the Venus Mars conjunction in Aquarius which is separating as of the 22nd of February but the cosmic lovers in the zodiac are doing a dance for quite a bit this month. And in the sign of Aquarius, this can mean that when it comes to relating to others, it's best to take a little bit of a cool and detached perspective and relate to anybody in your life, regardless of what kind of relationship it is. Relate to them as a friend. Keep things friendly. You may find it easier to meet people who are intellectually on your level, who are like-minded, who have similar interests, especially if they're quite quirky or unusual. You might find discussing things that are a bit unusual or quirky or original more interesting than anything else at this particular time. And as we have the mix of Aquarius and Pisces in the sky, it's looking very like conversations surrounding astrology, conversations surrounding extraterrestrials, space, the universe, <laughs> the cosmos, all seem to take center stage and they might be a little bit more common than usual. It can also mean that when it comes to love and romance, that meeting someone who is a friend first and foremost, or there is a friends to lovers story arc or even a lovers to friends story arc seems to be more common getting on with people through an Aquarius perspective is going to be more helpful so as I say detached cool friendly intellectually minded intellectual discussions uh, are going to be more important for connection under this time and also meeting and interacting with groups of people who are like-minded as well the tarot for this full moon 
going to pull a card and see what comes up for the full moon in Virgo. Oh. Okay, so we have the Four of Swords, time for non-action, isolation, going within, silence, rest, taking a break, healing, recal recalibrate and retreat. So this is about finding times to rest under this full moon, to get off the merry-go-round, so to speak, and take a breather. It's also, I think, indicative that in order to heal whatever it is that you need to heal under this Virgo full moon, because the opposition is coming to Pisces energy with Mercury there, the sun there, Saturn there, all in opposition to this full moon. One thing that you will need to be very mindful of is sleep your sleep patterns, getting enough rest, getting enough sleep. And there are some situations and cycles in life where it's harder to have sleep, to have uh, quality sleep, whether that's that you have a newborn, whether that is that you work night shifts. Sleep, your relationship to sleep looks very different to everybody. But it may be something that you want to prioritize or investigate uh, in your routines a little bit more at this time. People can be more tired with Saturn being in Pisces, Mercury being there and the sun being there. So prioritizing sleep, rest and alone time, even if you are exceptionally extroverted, is going to be quite important at this time. And dream analysis as well can be very important uh, with so many planets being in Pisces. Do pay attention to the symbolisms in your dream. There is no harm in going on to Google and having a little look at what your dreams are telling you. I know mine have been very, very bizarre. And interestingly enough, I've had reoccurring dreams about fish with all these planets moving into Pisces and myself being a Pisces rising, but I had a lot of dreams about fish lately and dolphins and the water and the seas and things like that. So do pay attention to the symbolism of your dreams. Google can't tell you everything at the end of the day. This is your mind. This is your unconscious, but it could be or your subconscious. This could be very important to you to gain a little bit of understanding as to what's going on in your own mind. That is important with the Sun, Mercury, Saturn conjunction in Pisces. And it may also be a discussion that's coming up collectively. People might be emphasizing the importance of your dreams and what they mean. For example, you could turn on a uh, a morning television show and they could have a dream analysis on or they could have someone talking about sleep patterns, your REM sleep cycles and things like that as well. So do pay attention to that under the full moon in Virgo because sleep is how we recover and this full moon has an emphasis on recovering and healing particularly because of the Chiron North Node conjunction. That's what I have for this full moon in Virgo. I'm going to get into what this means for each of the individual zodiac signs. The timestamps are listed below. As always, I suggest that you watch your rising sign first and foremost, but you can also watch your sun and your moon if you care to. I will be pulling cards for each and they might have additional insights if you want to check those out as well. I hope you all have a beautiful full moon and I'll talk to you soon. Hi Virgo, welcome to the full moon in your sign. So Virgo, this one is personal. This is a full moon in your first house, meaning that it is illuminating you. This is really giving you a little bit of clarity on how you're doing or how you feel you're doing. Your relationship with yourself is incredibly important. And seeing as we have your ruler in your sector of relationships, it is a good time to check in on how you're getting along with yourself. Sometimes, Virgo, you can be quite a self-critical sign. You can be quite judgmental and harsh of yourself. You have perfectionistic tendencies. And you might notice under this full moon that you're a little bit more sensitive or you perceive yourself to be a little bit more emotional when really full moons in your first house in your sign, they tend to make you more aware of your emotions, not necessarily more emotional. They can give you a bit of insight as to how you're doing and you might want to notice with your ruler Mercury in the seventh, how you're talking to yourself around this time. Is it kind? Is it helpful? Or is it just harsh? Because if it's just harsh and it's just critical and it's not constructive, it's not going to do very much for you. So you might want to notice if you're being kind to yourself, if you're being, with Mercury being in Pisces, um, 
sensitive to yourself, aware of your own feelings, aware of your own emotions, you might want to let go under this full moon of a particular way of judging or critiquing yourself that is perhaps hurting your self-esteem. Because we do have Chiron on the North Node meeting in a very psychological part of your chart, I think it would be a good time to put in place some kind of technique where you improve your relationship with yourself, whether that be CBT, whether that be affirmations, uh, tapping, um, emotional freedom techniques, some kind of technique that helps you develop a better relationship with yourself, better self-confidence and better self-esteem. Because with Chiron and the North Node meeting in Aries, it's a sign that wants us to be brave and self-assured and self-confident. That's not always possible, but with this full moon being in your sign, I think the emphasis is on developing a better relationship with yourself. And you might also notice around this time, because the first house rules your body, that you're more aware of your body too. You might notice aches and pains, you might notice something is off. This is a great time for a health checkup or a self-examination because the full moon tends to illuminate and show what we don't see. And when it's in the first house, if there is something wrong, this is a better time to catch it, to notice it, or just to understand it and make changes that you need for yourself in order to feel better and uh, function the best way that you can. This might also be a time when you're letting go of a particular attitude to life. And one thing that I really like about this full moon for you, Virgo, is that the trine from Jupiter is coming in from a very philosophical house. So some of you might decide that, and bear in mind, Saturn is in play with this full moon too, but some of you might decide that you want to be a little bit more philosophical, maybe a little bit more optimistic, maybe a little bit more faith-based. So you might be learning a lot about religion or spirituality or something that is giving you pause for thought. And this might even be coming from your own education that you're doing, what you're reading, the podcast you're listening to, what you're studying. If you're in university, you might be learning and increasing your knowledge. And this might actually be increasing your confidence. Or maybe for some of you, you're doing very well in school and it is making you feel more self-confident and self-assured. You might also be planning a trip, Virgo, or taking a trip around this time that is going to make you feel more confident, especially if you're traveling alone. You might feel a little bit more self-assured. You might feel a little bit more at ease with yourself and perhaps traveling or study is what is uh, positively impacting your relationship to yourself. Now, we do have Saturn in your seventh house. So since March 2023, you will have been making deeper commitments to your partnerships if you're in them, or you may have been having tough karmic lessons with partnerships if they served as a lesson rather than a blessing. And the opposition to this full moon is a chance to check in and see what it is that you need in relationships in order to feel safe, in order to feel uh, like your relationship with yourself is still good while you're with somebody else. And that can go for romantic relationships, business, or even friendship. It's a good time to really check in with your own personal needs so that you know yourself in these these unions as well. And you're more self-assured and self-empowered there too. The card that I got for you, Virgo, this made me laugh. <laughs> I got the moon. And this is funny because the full moon is in your sign. But this is saying that uh, under this full moon, I think for a lot of you, I think for many people, because of the Piscean energy involved, your dreams might be very revealing at this time, Virgo. Your intuition might be calling you somewhere, calling you to something, calling you to change something. It's important to listen to your intuition at this time. The moon can sometimes mean that we feel a bit anxious, we feel a bit fraught, we feel a bit nervous. So do check in with yourself and see if that is maybe presenting as, you know, headaches, whether that's presenting as stiffness, whatever it is, and sort of maybe tap into your intuition about what you could do to make yourself feel better. This, you know, Virgo energy is very healing. So this is a great time to figure out what it is that needs to happen for you to feel your best. I do think for a lot of you, you might be feeling a bit anxious about something and you might want to notice the inner dialogue in your head with Mercury and Pisces. You know, are you discounting your feelings and perhaps being too harsh and critical on yourself when actually with this full moon you would be better listening to your intuition about what is and is not a good idea to say to yourself because 
what may seem critical and judgmental is not necessarily so motivating and it's not necessarily go- so good for your relationship to yourself and I just think with this this moon card you might be a bit anxious but you could also be under an illusion that you're not doing as well as you actually are. That is what I have for you Virgo. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Libra, welcome to the full moon in Virgo for your sign. So Libra, this is hidden energy for you. This is happening in a very introspective, hidden, private, maybe quite isolated part of your chart. So at this time you might be feeling a little bit more low-key, a little bit more introverted. You might be needing some time to yourself to recharge, to regroup, to retreat. And you might be noticing that you're more tired, you're more fatigued, you might just be feeling a little bit more quiet, so to speak. Uh, For some people, the 12th house does rule hospitals and institutions because this is happening in a sign associated with health. You might be finding yourself under this full moon seeing a doctor, attending a hospital, maybe you work there, so that could be perfectly normal for you, but you might be finding yourself... um, maybe resting or healing from something. You know, that won't be the case for everybody. But it does tend to be a time of resting, healing and recuperating. So sometimes with this full moon, you can find yourself a little under the weather. You can find yourself a little run down and maybe needing more rest. It doesn't always have to be this way. One person's full moon in the 12th house cold can be another person's full moon in the 12th house stay at a monastery. It really just depends. It's a place where we go for healing and that looks different for everybody depending on what's going on in their life. So you might be finding under this full moon Libra that you are just wanting to chill out a little bit more. Your dreams could be incredibly vivid with a full moon in the 12th house. You could find that you're getting some really clear imagery And when you maybe Google your dreams, you're finding that, yeah, this really makes sense to what's going on in my life. And it's maybe illuminating some things for you. Perhaps you're dreaming of the past. Perhaps you're dreaming of people from the past. Or perhaps you're having maybe even some psychic dreams, Libra. You could be having little dreams that uh, predict moments in the future. It doesn't have to be with complete accuracy, but you might find some repetition in the themes of your dreams and your waking life. This can also be a time when you decide to let something go. For a lot of you, it could be something that is harming your health. So you might realize perhaps that you need to let go of something that you're eating because it's making you feel really bad. Maybe you're actually intolerant to it or worst case scenario, allergic to the thing and you're realizing, I need to let this go. For some, it could be quitting smoking. For some, it could be quitting drinking. Again, it will look different for everybody. There's no one size fits all for this, but... The full moon in the 12th tends to be a time when we're more aware of our vices and the opposition to Saturn in your 6th house uh, is making me think that perhaps you're getting very clear boundaries in place with what it is that you're eating, how you're living, how you're exercising and anything related to health Libra you're probably being a bit more serious about with Saturn being in your 6th house. And this also goes for work. Sometimes with the opposition to Saturn 6 to 12, you might find that you're needing to take some time off work. You're needing to take some time possibly to heal, to retreat, or maybe you just want some time off because things have been quite hard. You've had more responsibility. Maybe things have been kind of chaotic. The thing that I do like for you, Libra, is that we have Jupiter trining this full moon. Jupiter is coming in from your eighth house. So you might find that somebody, maybe a spouse or maybe someone who you're joint, you have joint finances with. For a lot of you, I think it may be a spouse, someone that you're intimately connected with or an intimate partner. You're maybe finding them a source of great support. You may be finding them a source of joy at this time, or you may find that perhaps, you know, positive increases when it comes to joint property, joint assets, joint loans is maybe making you feel a little bit like you can rest and you can retreat. But this may be some 
support coming in from a partner in your life. And if it's not that, a lot of you with the 8th and the 12th house in play could be getting a little bit more interested in psychic matters, psychic phenomena, astrology, tarot, anything that is maybe a little bit occult in nature. You might be growing your knowledge and expanding your knowledge in that area. And it might be helping you if you're feeling a little bit under the weather. So say for example, you or something that you're trying to heal say for example you are feeling a little bit like you're having a lot of knee pain and it's maybe not helping you're having trouble sleeping so you see a reiki therapist for the first time under this full moon a reiki healer you suddenly notice that you're sleeping better because of this healing that you're getting from someone who's maybe a little bit different to what you would usually do that's just an example I'm not saying that has to play out it's just an example of how it can be it feels like there's a lot of growth and expansion in a very occult area for you maybe it's seeing a shaman an astrologer but it's helping you heal it's maybe helping you let go Libra of something specific you also have the Chiron North Node conjunction in your seventh house of relationships so there may be some healing going on with a key partner you might be tackling some you know, whether you're in a relationship or whether you're not, you might be working on healing some sort of relationship pattern, relationship issues, whether that is that you perhaps date the same same type of person over and over again, or you have attachment issues or anything that really makes you feel insecure in relationships. A lot of you are quite bravely looking to heal and tackle an issue that you have with relating to others or feeling confident relating to others. Interestingly, the card that we got for you was the King of Wands, which is an Aries card. So I think it's really tapping into that energy. And the seventh house can also be one-on-one -on -one clients. This King of Wands says natural born leader, gets things going, entrepreneur, charismatic, free thinker, successful, successful, um, passionate, missionary, oh, missionary, visionary, Hmm, <laughs> visionary, creative, savvy. Um, so I feel like a lot of you could be dealing with a fire sign in your life or someone who has these qualities or you could be embodying these quali qualities. I think because it's happening in your seventh house, you might find yourself meeting someone if you're single who has these qualities. They could be a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. It might not be romantic. You might meet someone who has these qualities either way, Libra. But I think for a lot of you, this could be a person or this could be you embodying these qualities when it comes to your relationships. Maybe you're feeling like the healing that you're doing is pushing you towards being more confident in relationships and perhaps being more passionate in relationships too. So that's what I have for you, Libra, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Scorpio, welcome to the full moon in Virgo for your sign. So Scorpio, this is happening in a very social sector of the sky for you. This is happening in your sector of groups, friends, social networking, and also your hopes and aspirations and wishes for the future. So Scorpio, I think this one's looking pretty social for you. I would think a lot of you will be socializing the weekend of this full moon, maybe attending a significant event with like-minded people or people who share common interests. Because this is happening in the sign of Virgo, it's possible that these groups that you're involved with, these social events that you're attending are in some way linked to health or fitness or wellness. So that could be that you're perhaps going to a sporting event. This could be perhaps that you're attending a workshop based on um, some kind of healing process. So for example, you're attending a shamanic journeying workshop or you're attending a Reiki workshop. Maybe you're going to something where the focus is on either health or wellness because this is happening in the sign of Virgo and because the north node is conjunct Chiron in your sixth house. I feel like for a lot of you it could be attending a sporting event or it could be attending an event where you are actually focusing on healing something specific uh, possibly as a group so that's why I'm thinking workshop or something like that. But it looks, Scorpio, like it's going to be quite a fun time. For a lot of you, you might meet very like-minded people. You might make a new best friend. You might meet a prospective partner. You might uh, meet a prospective business relationship. Or you might be noticing that these are the people 
who are inviting you to these events or these are the people that are taking you along to these events. Business may be involved when it comes to your social activities because of Jupiter being in your seventh house. You can certainly meet some very influential or special people at these events, people that you really connect with quite well on a one-on-one -on -one basis with Jupiter being there. Or maybe even people that can help you financially, seeing as Jupiter does rule your second house of finances. And in the seventh, this can be one-on-one -on -one relationships that help you build your finances too. Now, we do have a lot of activity happening as well in your fifth house. And Saturn is there opposing this full moon. So you may find that perhaps if you are attending event, you might not want to drink too much with Saturn being there. You might not want to um, make merry as much with Saturn being in the fifth house. There could be something about it that's a little bit of a mood kill or you might just find that you want to attend this event totally sober. You want to attend this event, this event um, with a time limit in place. There's something about Saturn in the fifth that's making me think, okay, well... There has to be a little bit of holding back. You know, it's not a free for all at this event for whatever reason. So it feels as though there's something kind of sobering about this event or workshop or party that you're attending. And it might also just be that you're very focused on what you can do creatively. So if you're networking, you're really looking for people that are going to take you seriously, maybe in love, maybe dating, or maybe even if you're in an artistic profession or you are a creative, you might find that you're really focused on looking for people that you can take, that will take you seriously, Scorpio. I also think with Chiron and the North Node together in your sixth house, you may find that you're very, very focused on work, on routine, on uh, the healthy habits that you have in place for yourself in order to feel better and really lead with better physical health, better wellness in general. Because the North Node going through your sixth house is saying that's the area of life you're going to grow the most you know, your health, what you're eating, your diet, your exercise, those kind of things are really highlighted for you, Scorpio. And with Chiron there, these are also going to be things that help you heal, maybe work through some stuff, or maybe you can heal some wounding, or maybe even heal something physical that's been bothering you for a long time. And this full moon might help you meet people that can give you information, or people that can put you in touch with professionals who maybe are the best ones to help you in those areas. So say, for example, you go to a networking event and you're having knee trouble, you meet someone who is married to an orthopedic surgeon who knows quite a lot about it, you know, that kind of thing. So Scorpio, your tarot card was the King of Cups. And actually in this card, I know you can't see it, but he is wearing a tux. So I feel like for a lot of you, you could be attending an event that is black tie or an event that is quite snazzy, I would say. Uh, but this can also highlight a key person in your life. This could be a fellow water sign, a Cancer Scorpio Pisces. Um, for a lot of you, this could be a love interest with Jupiter in the seventh. This could be someone who is a water sign or someone who is quite heart-centered, kind-hearted, understanding, intuitive, artistic, uh, and maybe quite psychic for some of you as well, but someone who's emotionally balanced. This might also be an energy that you are embodying at this time, Scorpio. This might be an energy that you're very focused on bringing to groups of people. Maybe you're wanting to enter groups of people uh, with a more heart-centered approach. Maybe you're wanting to open up a bit more emotionally. With this full moon being in your sector of friendship, perhaps you're also breaking some patterns when it comes to friends and it's helping you feel like you are gaining emotional mastery you know you're maybe feeling more in in um in charge of your emotions at this point with saturn going through your fifth maybe you're feeling a little bit more self-aware of your emotions and how your feelings can get the best of you at times and you're maybe feeling like you've become more emotionally mature scorpio so that is what i have for you i hope you have a beautiful full moon and i'll talk to you soon Hi Sagittarius, welcome to the full moon in Virgo for your sign. So Sagittarius, this is happening at the top of your chart in a very public, visible place. This is happening in your 10th house, which is your sector of career. It's your sector of public standing, how you're viewed by the world, your goals, your social status. 
And so with this being a full moon, these themes are illuminated for you and how you feel about them is illuminated for you. So this might be a time to really think and figure out what you're feeling when it comes to your career or your goals or just how the world sees you. You could find yourself more visible at this time. So I would say do with that what you will. Just keep that in mind that you're more likely to get attention. You're more likely to be seen. So whether that's that you're posting something on your socials, whether that's that you're attending an event, you're more visible. People see you. So do with that what you will. Uh, because it's in Virgo, you could be considering, considering, oh, I just made up a word. You could be considering when it comes to your career, the habits you have in place or how you feel about it on a health level. Is your work affecting your health? Is it affecting your well-being? Good time to check in on that. I think for a lot of you, you could be changing jobs at this time. You could perhaps be... Um, leaving a job, some of you could be starting a job, some of you could be getting promotions, role changes, there could be some sort of change in your professional status. For others of you, maybe you're completing a goal that you've had for yourself, could be health related because of Virgo, could be organization, something that you maybe you've been really trying to perfect. There could be a point of culmination recognition at this time for you, Sagittarius. You may be finding yourself publicly recognized for the work that you do, or you might just be finding yourself reevaluating your goals for the future and what you need to change in order to get there. We have a lot of planets happening in your fourth house of home and family, so there's a lot of focus there and a lot of responsibility there with Saturn in the fourth house. You often see this come up for people who are first time parents, you often see it for people who are going through um, home changes, moving, trying to move. So these type of things could be going on for you and perhaps that is something you need to balance with your professional life, your public life. Maybe you feel as though you've been spending too much time focused at home and you want to be a bit more visible at work. Maybe some of you are finding that you actually want to commit more to home so you want to leave a job or something like that to Sagittarius. That is possible as well with this full moon. We do have Jupiter trining this full moon coming in from your sixth house. Your first house ruler is Jupiter. So you're quite focused on your health. You're quite focused on your fitness, your systems, getting organized, uh, whatever services that you provide. And this is in turn perhaps helping you grow your public image or grow in your career, grow professionally. And maybe you're being recognized for the work you do or the skills that you have, Sagittarius. Your tarot card was the Knight of Cups, which is about following your heart in this deck. So I think for a lot of you, you could be perhaps receiving some kind of invitation at this time. It could be an invitation to interview for a lot of you or invitation to check out a job. Uh, but for some of you as well, this can indicate romance. This can be a new love, a new romantic opportunity, a proposal. Uh, maybe for some of you, your 10th house is your public image and that you're getting engaged, you're getting married. But I think whatever the case, Sagittarius, especially because this Knight of Cups has this really beautiful horse on it. I know you can't see, but um, I feel as though this is about following your heart and doing so with a sense of freedom. We do have Chiron and the North Node together in your fifth house of love. So I think for a lot of you, maybe you're working on healing your heart. Maybe you're working on healing your view of romance, uh, healing from romantic experiences, romantic uh, pain, perhaps. The fifth house is associated with the heart. So perhaps you're focusing on heart healing, heart chakra healing. And I think a lot of you are going to be brave with that Chiron North Node conjunction in following your heart in many different areas of your life Sagittarius it doesn't just have to be romantic I think a lot of you are going to be brave in following your heart and that's where you're going to see the most growth when you do that is what I have for you Sagittarius I hope you have a good one and I'll talk to you soon hi Capricorn welcome to the full moon in Virgo for your sign Capricorn you'll be glad to know this is happening in a very open honest 
sector of your chart. This is happening in the ninth house. So this full moon is illuminating for you matters surrounding traveling, matters surrounding higher education, learning in general, wisdom, knowledge, and foreign affairs. So for a lot of you, perhaps around this time, you're traveling. Or perhaps for a lot of you, you're actually getting some knowledge and insight. And perhaps Capricorn, this knowledge and insight could be on a health matter because it's happening in Virgo or you could be learning about health. You could be learning about wellness. You could be seeing an expert. Uh, you could be learning from other cultures on healing. Or you could actually be traveling and you're feeling like this is something that's really good for you. Something that's maybe making you feel a lot better. But whatever the case, Capricorn, I feel that this full moon is placing an emphasis on your higher self, higher wisdom, higher knowledge and having faith as well. So this full moon can really give you some insights into your relationship with faith, what you believe in, the principles that you live by, um, and your higher self is more, it's easier to access at this time, easier to see the higher vision, the higher perspective, see things from a bird's eye view, that kind of thing. And because this is in your ninth house, and we're also getting a trine from Jupiter, there is a sense of, despite the fact that Saturn is in play here, um, there is a sense of optimism and hope, something to be optimistic about, something to be hopeful about as well. So... Jupiter is coming in and trining this full moon from your fifth house. So the joy that you feel in your romantic relationships, the feeling of being in love, the feeling of things that give you pleasure, the things that you enjoy, maybe creative pursuits, maybe also the love of your children, maybe also just what's going on in your kids' lives, where you feel like you can express yourself, where you feel like you can have some fun. I feel like for you Capricorn these are the areas really giving you joy and perhaps inspiring more faith. So maybe you're maybe you go on a date with someone for example at this full moon and you just find them so much fun they're so insightful they've a lot of knowledge they've a lot of wisdom and they make you feel more optimistic about life. <laughs> or perhaps your children are studying something and they're telling you about it. They're learning about it in school. They're telling you about it and you're thinking, oh, this is really changing my perspective. I'm really enjoying this. Or you're, you know, having fun debates with people over different topics and you're feeling really joyful. Uh, or perhaps even you're creating something. You're maybe feeling more creative and then you're inspired by your trip to a different country. Some of you could actually be getting a degree at this time, a certification, you could find yourself studying or doing exams, something related to higher study, or you could be finding yourself getting news of a legal case. You might also find yourself getting a visa or a passport if that's something that's been in the works for you for a while, Virgo. I mean, Capricorn. Apologies. So we also have your ruler Saturn in the third. So you're probably more conscious these days Capricorn of the way that you think your mindset and where that can either limit you or commit you you know you need to have a very strong mindset to commit to something a lot of commitment is in the mind so you're possibly challenging yourself or having someone else challenge you mentally at this time and you're maybe more aware of where you need to perhaps set some boundaries in place when it comes to how you're thinking or communication in general. You're maybe learning new ways to communicate with others. You're maybe more conscious of how you communicate with others or you can sometimes find it a bit stifling. Sometimes when Saturn goes through the third house, we can find it harder to find the words. We can find it harder to communicate. And Saturn tends to delay or slow things so that you can learn new ways of doing so that are more sustainable or more healthy for you. There's usually a lesson in it somewhere. Maybe some of you are actually really inspired Capricorn to study a new language at this time or maybe even teach a language. You could find yourself really inspired to do something as a hobby or recreationally that is going to help you learn. The, the onus seems to be on learning something. Maybe I think possibly speaking a new language, maybe having a new topic that you're just so interested in and invested in. 
Your tarot card Capricorn was actually the sun. So this is Leo energy. So you could be dealing with a Leo at this time. This is radiant energy. It's an energy rush, happiness, freedom, optimism, positivity, warmth, vitality, and success. So I think for a lot of you, the focus of a full moon in the ninth is to feel optimistic and hopeful about something or to choose faith, maybe even in the face of contradictory evidence maybe you're finding it a bit easier to connect to your faith a bit easier to connect with the universe a bit easier to connect with the feeling of freedom and expansion and adventure and if you have the opportunity to take an adventure Capricorn I think with the sun card you should absolutely do it that's what I have for you I'll talk to you soon bye Hi Aquarius, welcome to the full moon in Virgo for your sign. So Aquarius, full moons are times of peak emotional experience and also illumination. And this is happening for you in your eighth house. So some topics that may arise at the time of this full moon can be shared resources, shared finances. So that can be inheritance, that can be tax, loans, assets, property. It can be your partner or your spouse's money. Uh or their resources. This can also just be the concept of intimacy in relationships is coming up too. And sometimes the eighth house can shine a light on our interests in psychology, the occult, things that help us gain deeper understanding of human nature and of others. These might be areas that you're more interested in under this full moon, particularly because the Virgo energy of this full moon is quite witchy. We have a lot of planets together in your second house of finances, your income. So with Saturn there, you might be a little bit more serious about your spending. You might be a little bit more, in some cases, minimalistic with your spending. You might be finding that either through a situation or either through a desire you're wanting to spend less money or maybe you feel like you have to budget more to accommodate for other things. Saturn going through the second house can sometimes feel a bit restrictive financially but it can also help us build better financial habits and it's actually a very good one for saving too in some cases but you might be finding yourself more serious about these topics and perhaps you're doing a financial check with your partner, your spouse, if you have a new partner, perhaps this is the time you're talking about your finances, about mortgages, loans, homes, that kind of thing. Could be something that's coming up for you, Aquarius. But it's really shining a light on quite a mixed, you know, the eighth house is funny because it can manifest so differently for different people. You know, not everybody has a spouse, not everyone has a partner, so their finances aren't always in play. It can be that you're getting a mortgage at this time. It can be that you're getting um, some communication from the tax people. But for some people, it can feel very psychological. It can be a breakthrough with a therapist. It can be an increased interest in the occult, as I say, studying astrology. These kind of things can come up with a full moon in the eighth house. It is receiving a really nice trine from Jupiter in your fourth so I do think for a lot of you, there's a possibility that this is a mortgage or this is uh, home investments. I feel with the connection from your finances to your fourth house that perhaps you're putting a lot of money into the home. Perhaps you're expanding the home, renovating the home. But you can also find a lot of joy in the home with Jupiter going through the fourth house in cases too. You know, finding a lot of joy, expansion, optimism. But you could be finding that you and maybe your partner, maybe if you're moving in with someone or maybe you've bought a house with someone, you're investing a lot of money and a lot of time and effort uh, and resources into a property. Or maybe for some of you, you're getting a loan, you're getting a mortgage, you're getting a grant. Or perhaps some of you are getting some financial support from family too. But it feels for you, Aquarius, like under this full moon, finances are absolutely a point of interest to you. And if it's not those, it can be interest in the occult, as I say, or perhaps, you know, some sort of shadow work breakthrough, something you've really been working on, a trigger, a trauma, something that is, you're getting insight into it under this full moon. I think for a lot of you, there could be something legal in the works because your tarot card Aquarius was justice. So you could find that a Libra person is a key player at this time, someone who's showing up significantly for you under this full moon for whatever reason. 
Um, but this justice card says fairness and balance, doing what's right, cause and effect, integrity, fairness, balance, legal matters, consequences, life lessons, and truth. Some of you might be feeling incredibly honest under this full moon because the full moon is happening in your eighth. And by honest, I mean honest with yourself, being true to yourself, seeing something that maybe you've buried, something you've tried not to look at and choosing to look at it for the sake of absolute truth. You know, you have Pluto in your sign now. You're not going to be so shy in shying away from transformation, shadow work, uh, seeing yourself in absolute truth and being very honest with yourself, Aquarius. But I do think there could be something legal going on for quite a few of you. Uh, we do have an eclipse coming up in March in your ninth house. The south node is there. So perhaps you're wrapping up a legal case, a legal matter. Perhaps there's going to be documents signed under this full moon, documentation that needs to be signed. Especially, you know, that's quite common if you're getting a mortgage or you're getting a loan or something like that. You could find that you're having to sign documents, having to sign papers. You do have Mercury in your second house, so you could find yourself signing something that is financial or to do with your finances, to do with money. Maybe you're having to submit your financial information for the sake of something legal, Aquarius. But that is what I have for you. I hope you have a good one and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Pisces, welcome to the full moon in Virgo for your sign. So Pisces, this is happening in your opposite sign, which means that this full moon is illuminating your relationship sector. And this means that when it comes to your relationships, we have a peak moment of culmination, but also illumination. So you're more clear on how you feel about your relationships. There may also be a peak experience when it comes to your relationship life. So Saturn is opposite this full moon and Saturn is in your sign, which is making you quite serious. You know, you're wanting to be serious, you're wanting to be responsible, you're also wanting to be realistic, which let's be honest, for those of us that have Pisces in our big three, sometimes we could deal with a little bit of extra reality dosage, but not always. We don't want it to dull the sparkle completely, but I feel as though with Saturn being in Pisces now, it's giving this sense of taking responsibility, taking accountability, and maybe also feeling a little bit reserved or just a little bit more, as I say, realistic about matters. And so for some people, they might decide under this full moon that their relationship isn't actually going to work in the long run. They can't quite commit to it. Maybe there aren't shared commitments. Maybe there isn't a shared vision of the future or the relationship has run its course. Sometimes full moons in the seventh house do tend to end relationships. But for other people, this can actually be uh, committing more to your relationship, committing deeper to your relationship. And for others, this can be meeting somebody that has a lot of relationship potential. This full moon is trining Jupiter in Taurus. And as Jupiter rules your 10th house, and this full moon is happening in the sign of Virgo, Pisces, for those of you that are single or looking, you could meet someone through the workplace. Or you could also meet someone quite significant professionally as a business partner or a business relationship. But with Jupiter in the third house trining this full moon, a lot of you could meet somebody um, relationship wise that you feel very optimistic about. Maybe you have shared beliefs. Maybe you have really good conversations with Jupiter coming in from the third house. You might meet someone at work or through email or through the internet or something like that. You might communicate with someone and realize that there's relationship potential there. You might also meet someone through a sibling, through a cousin, through a neighbor, through activities in your everyday life, you know, your mundane life, you could actually meet someone quite special. So for a lot of Pisceans, this is looking like a time where either, you know, you're leaving a relationship, you're deepening a commitment to a relationship, or perhaps you're meeting somebody at this time. Uh, Relationship-wise, it's going to be significant for you, Pisces. And interestingly enough, your tarot card was the lovers, which is all about union. So this is about connections, relationships, alignment, openness, romance, harmony, choices, duality, and love. So for a lot of you, you might actually find yourself just serendipitously aligned with someone who's a really good fit 
For others of you, you might feel more connected to your significant other. And for some of you, you may have a choice to make when it comes to your relationship, whether it can go the distance, um, whether it is going to be, you know, sustainable in the long term. Pisces, inevitably, I feel with this full moon that the choice is yours because the ruler of Virgo is Mercury and it's in your first house. So I think these are things that you're thinking about, things that you're deciding, things that you're bringing up in conversation. Or if you're meeting someone, I feel like you may find yourself striking up a conversation with somebody first that leads to your relationship or maybe you're the one messaging somebody or something like that that's pulling a relationship in. That's what I have for you Pisces and I'll talk to you soon. Hi Aries, welcome to the full moon in Virgo for your sign. So Aries, there's a big focus under this full moon on your health. Reason being is that this full moon is happening in the sixth house, which is to do with your health, your wellness, your diet, your exercise routines, things like that. And we also have the Chiron North Node conjunction in your first house. So the first house is the physical body and Chiron is associated with healing. So I think for a lot of you, you might actually be physically healing at the time of this full moon. That can be that you're healing from surgery, that can be that you're healing from birth, it can be that you're healing from an injury, uh, or it can also be emotional, mental health healing that you're working on at this time too. It seems to be quite personal, so I do think for a lot of you there seems to be a focus on healing. And that can mean under this full moon you're getting some kind of result, some kind of procedure, some kind of test, but the focus is primarily for a lot of Aries risings on your physical health and well-being. And that is a priority for you at this time. Now, it can be mental health because it is opposite Saturn in the 12th house. But Saturn in the 12th can also indicate healing, recuperation, periods of time in hospitals, periods of time in recovery from something. So I do think for a lot of you, there could actually be some physical healing going on. And you might be more focused on your health. You might be more focused on... Um, Well, I think for a lot of you, it looks like rest and recuperation, but some of you could actually be focusing on yoga retreats, healing retreats, wanting to take time out from everyday life to work on healing something within you, whether that is in your psyche, your soul, or physically. I think a lot of you are focusing very much areas on your health and well-being at the time of this full moon. And I think that's very important for you. Chiron and the North Node meeting up in your sign is quite rare. So... In terms of your relationship to yourself, in terms of your identity, in terms of your levels of self-acceptance, self-acceptance is what's going to lead you toward healing at this time. Self-acceptance is what is going to make you heal your relationship to yourself, having courage, having self-acceptance and challenging yourself when it comes to your own personal relationships. So maybe challenging any negative belief you have about yourself, any limiting labels that you have on yourself that don't feel, they don't feel healing. They, they feel like they're preventing you from healing. Uh, Aries. So that's what you're kind of looking into at this time. Maybe you're becoming more aware of any wounding surrounding your identity, individuality or self-expression are all potentially being illuminated at this time and they might be illuminated through perhaps the relationship between your physical and emotional bodies so those might be topics you're more interested in at this time as well there is a trine coming in from jupiter in your second house to this full moon so there's possibilities of your finances increasing areas there's possibility in getting a raise getting a bonus having some sort of financial joy with jupiter going through the second house more opportunities to make more money to Uh, charge more for the services that you provide that's also something that could be happening under this full moon because it is in the sector of your services and your work and for a lot of you there could be a role change or there could be a professional change that is perhaps making you more money or increasing your confidence or also perhaps just more in alignment with your values and what truly matters to you Aries. Now for you we have the star card which is the wish granted card. So under this full moon there might be something happening that feels like a wish is being granted in your life but the star is also again associated with healing so your message was very clear. Uh, With Mercury, the Sun, Saturn, Neptune, all in your 12th house, you may be more connected to the divine, to the ethers, you might be experiencing more psychic intuition, 
clairvoyancy and you're perhaps getting a lot of downloads you feel very connected to your intuition and this might be leading you in a new direction when it comes to healing but it also might be connecting your relationship to these types of concepts and topics that is probably very healing for you so maybe you're trying to meditate more maybe you're trying to let your emotions flow more, get more in touch with your emotions, get more in touch with what parts of you need some attention at the moment. Because, you know, the Chiron North Node conjunction in your first to say healing thyself. So that might be what your wish is at this time, Aries, as well. That's what I have for you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi, Taurus. Welcome to the full moon in Virgo for your sign. So Taurus, this is happening in a really fun part of your chart. This is happening in your fifth house of love and romance and play and creativity and joy and the arts and passions and hobbies. And it's also the sector of children, but also childlike energy. So where you feel like a kid again comes under the fifth house. So these matters are all brought into illumination, Taurus. And I particularly like this one for you because it is going to be trining your um, Jupiter in your first house which brings a lot of positive energy to you um, because your expansion, your optimism, your hope, your joy, your growth is all positively impacting at this point your fifth house. So maybe for some of you, you have been pursuing something creative and you've been pursuing it as perhaps a service or a work that you provide because this is in the sign of Virgo. So maybe you are putting your work out there, your creative work out there and you're feeling quite excited and joyous about this. It might also be that perhaps you are finding love or enjoying love through the work that you do or the services that you provide. So maybe this is falling in love with a colleague. Maybe this is falling in love with an employee. (laughs) You know, you might want to talk to HR about that. But uh, whatever it is, Taurus, it looks like you're really feeling a lot of love and joy when it comes to um, some area of your life. And I think for a lot of you, it could be romantic. I think for some of you, it could be artistic. Filmins in the fifth house are nice times to go to concerts, to go to gigs, to go to events that you're really going to feel creative or inspired by attending them. This can be seeing your favorite musician, for example, because the trine from Jupiter in your sign, Taurus, is a very musical energy. So you might be going to a gig, you might be going to a concert. Some of you might be doing this for a date with it being in the fifth house, or you might just be noticing with, you know, a Virgo fifth house full moon, you're wanting to inject a bit more romance into your everyday life. So whether that's your skincare routine, whether that is playing music as you get ready, um, Whatever romance means to you in your day-to-day schedule, maybe that's silk pyjamas, maybe it's a silk pillowcase, I don't know, but it feels as though you're wanting a little bit more romance in your day-to-day life, or maybe you're making more time for date night with a partner. It can also be with your, um, with this fifth house ruling your sector of children, if you have children, there could be something coming up with them at this time, maybe it's pertaining to their school, their work, or their health. These themes could come to the fore at this time, Taurus, but I feel like whatever it is, you're kind of feeling hopeful, optimistic. You're the voice of optimism at this time. You do have Saturn in your sector of groups and friendships and communities, um, wider communities. So it could be a case that you're maybe feeling a little bit at the time of this full moon that... You're having to put some boundaries in place with a friend. You're having to put some boundaries in place perhaps with opinions of friends or what is being demanded of you in a group or a a joint endeavor, a joint humanitarian endeavor. Maybe the effort and time you're putting towards something humanitarian or something charitable or perhaps the uh, energy exchange between you and a friend. Perhaps they're putting a lot of pressure on you or a lot of opinions towards you and you're wanting to put a bit of a boundary in place especially if it's coming to who you're dating or what you're doing for fun or um, your children maybe you just feel like people are overstepping a little bit when it comes to advice even if they mean well you might want to put up a bit of a boundary with somebody in your friendship group Taurus. Your tarot card is the fool and it says a free spirit 
setting out spontaneous adventure, potential carefree opportunity and the unknown. So I feel like Taurus you're attracting a lot of opportunities and I feel that this full moon is a nice time to just be a bit more carefree. I know that it is opposing Saturn and we are in Pisces season with Saturn conjunction so there's a sense of being responsible and being you know um, committed to what it is that we're needing to be committed to but I think there's also with Uranus being in your sign still and Jupiter being in your sign there's a lot of opportunities to be carefree spontaneous take adventures uh, do something fun embrace opportunities embrace the unknown and embody that fool like energy because you do have Uranus in your first house and it is going to form a nice aspect to the new moon in Pisces coming up so you're going to want to pay attention to that one too it's on the 10th of March but I will be talking about that a little bit later that's what I have for you Taurus and I'll talk to you soon hi Gemini welcome to the full moon in Virgo for your sign so Gemini this is happening in your fourth house which means that matters surrounding the home property or the family are being illuminated at this time so there could be something going on in the home maybe with a family member there could be something coming up with a property too uh, because this is in the sign of Virgo what you may be looking at is that in terms of a home or property matter you might be wanting to get more organized you wanting you might be wanting to be more efficient to declutter something like that you might be focusing on getting rid of things you no longer need or getting something fixed within the home. Uh, Virgo is a very efficient, practical, productive energy. So these types of approaches may be clear within your home or what needs to change within your home to be more effective and productive. So it does look like for a lot of you, it might be clearing out some stuff, organizing some stuff. Maybe you're using that book. Isn't it Marie Kondo? The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. I think that's a book. Maybe you're doing something like that around your home. You're finding a folding method that suits you. Or it could be that you're actually moving home, Gemini, and you're getting the details in place. You're reading the fine print, that kind of thing. Or you could be perhaps selling a home. Or you could just be changing something within the home. And I think for a lot of you with the Virgo energy, you're probably changing it because it needs to be fixed or it needs to be more productive or effective. It's quite practical energy, I will say. It can also be that if something is coming up with a family member or a family matter, it could be surrounding their work or their health with it being in the sign of Virgo. It doesn't have to be, but it may be, it may be playing out that way. I think for a lot of you, emotions are potentially rising to the surface surrounding a family matter or surrounding a family member. The fourth house is quite sentimental, it's quite nostalgic, so a lot of you could be thinking of family, a lot of you maybe if you live abroad could be homesick or you could be missing someone in your family or you could just be feeling a little bit more sentimental and softer. Maybe looking through old photos, maybe going back to where you grew up with the full moon in the fourth house. It is opposite Saturn in the 10th, so one of the reasons that maybe a lot of emotions are coming up is because you may actually not have time to reflect very much or deal with them because you have so many work commitments or responsibilities. A lot of you, Gemini, with Saturn in the 10th, you may be really focusing on building your career, taking on additional responsibility, or some of you could actually have limitations in career. Maybe some of you have retired and you're finding you need to fill, find new ways to fill your time, new goals. Maybe for some of you, you're really dedicated to a goal or really dedicated to something that is um, something that is very important to you and it's maybe helping you heal. There's a huge feeling of healing around this full moon, Gemini. And... I think with Chiron and the North Node in Aries, maybe you're finally feeling brave enough to pursue a particular dream or a particular aspiration that is going to be healing for you. It's something that you really wanted to do. It just takes a bit of courage. It just takes a bit of bravery. It might be an aspiration. It might also be healing your relationship to a friend or groups of people. There may be opportunity to heal or reconcile with a friend or heal and reconcile within a team or maybe just healing some old wounding surrounding these matters for you, Gemini. 
We have the Six of Pentacles as your tarot card, which is about giving and receiving. And actually in this card, um, they're handing each other a gift. So you might be receiving a gift around this time, Gemini. This is about generosity, balance, kindness, accepting, give and take, care, being valued and quid pro quo. So at this time you might need to let others show you how much they appreciate you, show you how much they care. You might do better to be a bit kinder to yourself under this full moon, Gemini. It can be quite self-critical and judgmental. And the Six of Pentacles is all about kindness and acceptance. So maybe allowing yourself to accept help from other people, to accept generosity from other people. And maybe um, if you're feeling very appreciative of somebody, you want to let them know and give them a gift yourself. That's what I have for you, Gemini, and I will talk to you soon. Hi Cancer, welcome to the full moon in Virgo for your sign. So Cancer, this is happening in your third house and this is a very communicative part of the chart for you. So you may at the time of this full moon, because there are times of illumination and clarity, you might be getting some information or news or communication that is illuminating for you. So that can be a letter, that can be an email, a phone call, a message or a conversation that you're having that perhaps gives you some information, some finer details because this is in Virgo. Some finer details, you might find that you're getting some sort of communication that gives you answers. This may be pertaining to, because it is in the sign of Virgo, health matters or work matters because Virgo rules health and work. So you may find that any communication centers around those themes, it doesn't have to, but it can be more likely as this is a Virgo full moon. You might also find that you're becoming more aware of your local environment, your local neighborhood. Maybe you're becoming more active in the community. Maybe there's an event occurring in your community around the time of this full moon. Something that is worth attending because you do have Jupiter transiting your 11th house of groups, social networking, connecting with like-minded people and this is trining the full moon in your third. So you might find that you're actually attending an event locally or you know when I say locally it could be a short trip so somewhere that's maybe a few towns away, maybe an hour's drive or something like that, or maybe even depending on where you live, it's a short plane journey. But it can be that you're attending something fun with friends or some sort of event locally, or you're taking a trip with friends. It feels as though it's quite social for you, Cancer. It feels as though you might be connecting with a lot of like-minded people and this might be quite joyous. I will say you do have Saturn transiting the ninth house, which can sometimes mean that Maybe you're not as inclined to travel long distances. Maybe you're not as inclined to travel too far. Maybe because you have commitments or maybe you're finding you're not socializing as much because you have commitments to your studies, you have commitments to learning or something like that and you're maybe not wanting to go too far but you find an event is coming up locally that you want to attend, you want to go to and it could be quite a fun one for you Cancer. It could be quite exciting. You might also find that you are spending some time with cousins or siblings or there could be some news coming up surrounding a sibling or a cousin um, and it might also be that perhaps they are someone that you're traveling to see or you're socializing with them and their friends as well, Cancer. But I think for a lot of you it looks like news or information may be coming to you under this Virgo full moon. It might not necessarily be the news or information that you hoped for as it is opposite Mercury and Mercury is in Pisces where it's not so comfortable. So you might be getting some information, you might be having some sort of communication, but you sense there may be a little something more under the surface or you maybe sense that there's something underlying, something you've not quite been able to deal with completely. You might have the facts, but you might not necessarily have the facts that your feelings are telling you you should have, if that makes sense. You might, you might feel intuitively it's something else under this full moon. The tarot card that I have for you is the Two of Pentacles, which is a balancing act. So you might be back and forth on something. You might feel like you're going around in circles. Uh, you might be 
having to make some sort of decision at this time and you're weighing up your options. You might feel like you're juggling multiple things. You're having to be adaptable and you're having to prioritize what is most important for you and that requires a choice, Cancer. So you're kind of juggling a lot at the moment, I think. That's what I'm seeing with this. That is what I have for you and I'll talk to you soon. Hi Leo, welcome to the full moon in Virgo for your sign. So Leo, we have a full moon in your second house of your finances. And so this full moon might be bringing matters to a head financially. It might be bringing some illumination to your money, your income. And that can just be that you're deciding to look at your bank statements, your spending, you're doing a little bit of inventory when it comes to your finances. Virgo is a very particular perfectionistic and picky energy. So you might be picking over your finances, you might be getting all the finer details, you might be looking at it with a fine or going through it with a fine tooth comb, so to speak, Leo. So you're getting very clear in your finances. I think a lot of you might also be with this being in the second house. The second house is associated with gifts, so you could be receiving a gift at this time. Or it could be that you're sharing your gifts at this time and that don't that doesn't have to be financial. It can be that you're sharing your natural talents with others or you could be finding that you're making money through something new maybe a creative talent maybe something that um, you're providing as a new service so to speak Leo with this woman being in your sector of finances and gifts I also feel with the opposition to Saturn in Pisces perhaps you're realizing where you could be a little bit more financially self-sufficient that's not going to apply to everybody but you might be finding that for some of you, you could be going through separations or divorces where you are becoming more financially independent because you're no longer attached financially to someone. You could be focusing on clearing out debt, clearing out um, old unpaid loans, things like that. Maybe under this full moon, you're realizing how you can do that or you're realizing how you've changed that particular area with the opposition to Saturn and Pisces. So you might notice progress that you've made in paying something off or you might notice that you're suddenly um, growing your finances because of these cuts that you're making in other areas, I guess, is the way this could be, Leo. Now, there is a lovely trine to Jupiter in your 10th house. So I feel like for a lot of you... You might be offering something new professionally that's going to make you more money or you might be upping your fees. Jupiter going through the 10th house can bring a lot of recognition. It can bring a lot of prestige to your career. You can become very well known. You have more reach. You're more likely to meet important people that can help you on your professional path or you're more likely to accomplish your goals because you believe in yourself more. Um, whatever the case it is, Leo, it feels as though perhaps what's going on for you professionally or publicly could be benefiting you financially, or you might be going through the finer details of how this can benefit you financially, you know, what you can uh, charge, what your fees are, or perhaps you're negotiating a, a raise, a um, promotion could be leading to more money, but it does feel like you're finances are being illuminated here Leo and you might be getting paid for something that you're doing as part of your career and I feel that it's very positive when it comes to your career and your professional development or your growth Leo uh, it feels as though you're more likely to be seen so do take advantage of that it can bring fame sometimes when Jupiter transits the 10th it can bring a lot of recognition and interestingly enough for you Leo your tarot card was the knight of wands where you're feeling adventurous, rebellious, energetic, confident. It also says charmer here, and it does say shameless flirt, just letting you know. But um, it also says excited, heroic travel. So perhaps you are feeling very confident and you're putting yourself out there more. And this is going to help you grow in self-confidence and also grow and showcase your talents that you have your unique gifts that you want to show the world and you might be taking a risk you might be taking some sort of adventure at this time leo and really embracing the energy of bravery and just enjoying yourself i think with whatever it is that you're doing professionally or enjoying the attention that you're getting professionally and how this is maybe growing your confidence or maybe even growing your finances that's what I have for you, Leo, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.